Congestive Heart Failure Treatment Overview. The goal of congestive heart failure treatment is to increase cardiac output so that the heart is able to pump more blood every minute. And gener generally, interventions and medications are going to work by either improving the pumping action of the heart and or reducing the workload on the heart. So let's look first at some ways that maybe the heart could actually be fixed. If there is a valve problem, then that would need to be corrected. So by replacing or repairing a heart valve, the heart is going to have its workload reduced and its pumping action improved. Coronary artery disease is often the underlying cause of heart failure, and so if there is a way to go around a clogged artery, that's called a cabbage or coronary artery bypass surgery, uh, bypass graft, uh, then that would be a good, a good uh, intervention, or angioplasty in which the clog is pressed away from the lumen of the vessel so that blood can flow more freely. So these would be two methods that would typically be attempted in order to fix the heart if needed. Uh, the valve obviously would only be if there had been a problem with it. Severe cases may require uh, surgical implants such as a pacemaker, um, a ventricular assist device, or even possibly a heart transplant in severe cases. Uh, ventricular assist devices um, are going to mechanically aid the pumping of the, the heart, and heart transplants would, would be very rare indeed. Then the next question to ask is, can the burden on the heart, so right here, can the burden on the heart be lessened uh, with two main goals here, uh, by decreasing fluid overload, or by decreasing blood pressure, maybe a medication here would decrease heart rate or increase vasodilation. So always keep that in mind that the goal of the medications for congestive heart failure typically fall into these categories, decreasing fluid overload or decreasing blood pressure. So let's look at what fills the biggest category, and that would be diuretics. So diuretics act on the kidney and they increase urine output and therefore they decrease fluid overload. And they ultimately cause the kidney to form more urine which can then uh, go down to the bladder and then um, exit the body. There are three main kinds of diuretics, and the first two, thiazides and loop diuretics, both will cause a general loss, not just of sodium and water from the body, but all kinds of electrolytes. So it's key to monitor for hypokalemia, because along with that sodium and water loss, Potassium can be lost from the body in actually more amounts than it normally should be. So, not surprisingly, there's another kind of diuretic that's called a potassium sparing diuretic. And sometimes these are what we call aldosterone antagonists, so they block the sodium retention effects of aldosterone in the kidney. Now, this ha can have the opposite problem. A potassium-sparing diuretic can actually cause the body to retain too much potassium, and now the patient should be monitored for hyperkalemia. Any time that potassium is out of whack with its blood levels, either too high or too low, there can be um, a great risk of electrical abnormalities in the heart, and that's the last thing a congestive heart failure patient needs, and so it's very important to monitor these. And then for all the diuretics, whether they're thiazides or potassium-sparing diuretics, uh, patients should be monitored for hypotension. Because if the goal of these medications is to reduce fluid volume and blood pressure, 
then what can happen is their blood pressure can actually go too low. So that's something to keep an eye out on. Also, monitoring serum creatinine. Serum creatinine um, is a very good indicator of kidney function. And if the levels are rising and getting too high, that indicates that the kidneys are having problems. Now let's look at a different type of medications that would work for congestive heart failure. And these, you'll notice, we're now looking at blood vessels and a heart over here. So ultimately, these are going to be looking to stimulate vasodilation and maybe to slow the heart down or to rest it. So uh, a very famous type of medication for congestive heart failure are ACE inhibitors. And um, ACE inhibitors block the enzyme that forms angiotensin II. So if angiotensin II normally causes a lot of vasoconstriction in the body to raise blood pressure, which it does, then an ACE inhibitor will block the formation of that angiotensin II and thereby decrease blood pressure. So we get um, increase in vasodilation with ACE inhibitors, and vasodilation will lower blood pressure and ease the workload on the heart. And then also, there will be a drop in aldosterone levels. And hopefully you'll, you'll remember that aldosterone causes the kidney to retain salt and water. And the formation or the, the release of aldosterone is stimulated by angiotensin II. So if you can decrease angiotensin II levels, you'll decrease aldosterone levels. If you can decrease aldosterone levels, you'll reduce fluid overload. And then sometimes a uh, medication called um, ARBs or angiotensin receptor blockers might be prescribed. Now these ultimately are going to decrease the amounts of angiotensin II in the blood um, or I'm sorry, decrease the activity of angiotensin II by blocking so it decreases the activity of it. And they're usually prescribed when ACE inhibitors are not tolerated by the patient. And then beta blockers are typically prescribed. And beta blockers will block the binding of norepinephrine to beta receptors on the heart. And what that will do is cause a decrease in heart rate, which will decrease blood pressure and the load on the heart. Now with all of these medications, it's going to be important to monitor, again, the patient for hypotension. Because if you're prescribing medications that are intended to decrease blood pressure, then the patient can actually go a little bit too low. So just to look at this one more time, um, you want to think about with medications for congestive heart failure, how to increase cardiac output. And that's usually going to be by improving the pumping action or reducing the workload on the heart. Valve repairs, um, if there is something wrong with the valve, uh, bypassing a clogged artery, Surgical implants might be necessary in se severe cases. Reducing uh, volume overload with diuretics and reducing um, vasoconstriction and the, the, beat, the rate of the heart are all going to be um, effective methods of treating congestive heart failure.